What's Operation Walk? So you, it, you said your participation in Operation Walk has been one of your most rewarding aspects in your career. Yeah, because it's different than what we do on a daily basis. On a daily basis, we're taking care of patients for um, insurance companies, and we're dealing with paperwork and kind of doing what we do on a daily basis. Operation Walk is a program started by Dr. Larry Doerr, a total joint surgeon in California. And his first trip was to Russia, and he realized that there was something that we could be doing internationally to help patients who don't have the benefit of being um, able to get hip and knee replacements. And so now there are about 15 chapters around the country that do that, and we go to different countries. I've been to India, Peru, uh, Trinidad, and um, back to Peru, uh, doing operations for patients who otherwise couldn't get it. So we, we get there on the morning, the first, first morning, we see patients in the office to seeing who's candidates for surgery. And there may be, unfortunately, 250, 300 people mm. hoping to get surgery. And we can only do about 50 in a three-day period. We have usually five or six surgeons from around the country who are working with a team. We take everything with us, not just the anesthesiologist and, and the people, but all the equipment that, that's necessary because most of the countries where we work don't have what we need. So it's very rewarding to have these patients um, who've not been able to walk very well get joint replacements and get their life back. And the things we learn is these patients, um, they're tough. Here, we know about our opioid epidemic and um, the problems that we have with our pain medicines. These patients take Tylenol, and at the time when we first started, they were taking Darvacet, something we don't have anymore, for their post-operative pain. No major narcotics, and they just function. There was a lady I took care of in Peru that had both her hips had essentially autofused. So she she really couldn't sit very well. She couldn't do much because her hips were so stiff. To go to the bathroom, she had to go to the shower. Oh. So we did both her hips at one setting. She took nothing for pain medicine afterwards and um, was sitting and walking the next day and going to the bathroom like others go to the bathroom. You don't... You don't see those too often in our normal practice in America. You don't see those patients who are just so bad that they can't function that you really can make that kind of impact. We treat patients who have arthritis and get them out of pain and improve function, but it's rare that you change somebody that much. No wonder it's so rewarding. It's like missionary work. Exactly. When you say you take everything, does that mean you have to charter a big plane? You can't go on. Do you go on a commercial plane? No. So, um, yeah, we go commercially. Uh, the people do, and then we send cargo uh, before we go, which is always a challenge getting it through customs. Oh, I bet. So, is it machines or is it just devices? So sometimes it requires anesthesia machines that are not there, but often it's devices, dressings, drapes, bandages. So how many? You got five or six doctors. How many? Is the whole team? Usually 35, 40 people. And you stay how long? Uh, five days. And there'll be two people st usually stay a little bit longer to make sure everybody does okay post-operatively. How so do you pick the city, the, t the country you're going to go to? Each of the chapters around the United States have certain areas where they go. So um, I've been with a group from Maryland, and um, Paul Canusia leads that group. And he's now leading it as part of the American Association of Hip and Knee Surgeons. We brought Operation Walk into it. Um, into this big organization a year ago because Larry's reaching retirement age, et cetera, and we, we want his dream and, and what's become so successful to live on. Do you, and, do you, go, do you go every year? No. Um, Simon Mears, one of our partners here, um, I met him in India. He was working at Johns Hopkins at the time, and um, I met him in India, operated with him there. When I moved from private practice, I'd been in private practice most of my career, moved to the university a little less than five years ago and I knew that Simon had moved to Dallas and was doing private practice work and he's truly an academician at heart great teacher great researcher a great surgeon and so I called Simon and said you know if you ever get bored doing what you're doing we've got a spot for you in Arkansas doing academics again he said I'm bored when can I come look <laughs> so now we alternate years because he's been a big part of Operation Walk as well and he probably speaks another language which is he, beneficial he, he doesn't he doesn't? I don't think so. I thought you said he was Indian or something. No, we, I met him in India. Oh, you met him in yeah, India. Yeah, we were operating together in India as part of a Operation Walk trip. So when you come back and you have to see Americans, and we all know we're spoiled, me included, how do you make that 
jump back into caring for these people when you've been like, you you don't have it bad. You should see what I've just seen. Yeah, you know, we, we feel that about ourselves too. Not just our patients we're taking care of, but we see a whole different side of the world and a civilization that don't have the benefits we have. So it's not just about our patients. So It's almost like coming back from war. You're like almost in these different cultures and you come back and you're like, I can't, it's hard to get back into thinking about the materialistic way that we live here, right. the, the ease of our life. Yeah. the You know, we have been able to do it in the United States as well. It's We don't do it as much in the United States now. In private practice, we did have a few events here um, once a year where we could do them. Now, because of the Affordable Health Care Act and, and more universal coverage, it's harder to do those things because Why? because patients are expected to have insurance and coverage, and so it's it's covered for their plan. So there's really no – this is charity work, so it's hard to do charity work that way. Yeah. And you're saying that there's no there's there's not that much need for charity work because they've got uh, they've got insurance now. Correct. For what we do, that's wrong. That's correct. And, and here in our state, with expanded Medicaid, there's um, certainly there's access. You've been listening to Up in Your Business with Carrie McCoy. For links to resources you heard discussed on today's show, go to flagandbanner.com, select radio, and choose today's guest. All interviews are recorded and posted the following week. Subscribe to podcasts wherever you like to listen. Carrie's goal is simple, to help you live the American dream.